Welcome to Hovercraft Physics and Chemistry for a tutorial on the new Vernier Video Analysis app. This is going to be a great tool if you have to do any online teaching or blended learning because it allows students to look at videos, gather data, and do some analysis. This particular app does require a subscription. If you are an educator, they will give you a trial if you'd like to try that out. One of the great things about this app is it completely runs in browser. I'm recording this on a Chromebook, so it can run completely in Chrome. So this is a great option if you are a school district that uses Chromebooks. It will also run on tablets, iPhone, Android. So it's very much a resource that can be used on lots of different platforms. If you are a student watching this, you will need to get the access key link from your teacher, um, but I'm going to go ahead and jump in. So you literally go to videoanalysis.app to open this great video analysis tool. When you do that, you'll see that they do have some sample files that you can analyze down below. I'm going to go ahead and choose a file. And again, I'm on a Chromebook, so I'm going to go to import video and that should open your files app. Now, the nice thing about this is it also will show your Google Drive. So I have a file already created that I'd like to analyze, and it is in this folder. If you have a file saved directly to the Chromebook, you can look in the My Files as well. So I'm going to go ahead and open this file called soccerballdrop.mov. And you can see that it has brought in the file. I recorded this video on an iPhone using the slow-mo feature, which I would highly recommend. So when you're in slow-mo, you have to do a little bit of a tweak with the frame rate, and I'll show you how to do that. But with the slow-mo setting, you get really great video with very little blur. But anything moving fast, if you're not in some sort of slow-mo setting, there'll be trouble pinpointing where the object is at each frame. So I'm going to go ahead and play this video through so you can see what it looks like. And again, you'll see that the slow-mo feature turns on uh, midway through the video. So it's in slow-mo as it drops. And then at the very end of the clip, it goes back to regular speed. There is a little tweak that we have to take care of for that in your settings down here. So in this uh, gear icon, when you click on that, you have a couple of options. I'm going to go down to the second option first. The video frame rate will be brought in um, as described in the video file. So even though this was shot at 120 frames per second in the slow-mo feature on my iPhone, it's brought in as a 30 frame per second video. So I need to set the effective video frame rate because what I'm analyzing was moving in that slow-mo at 120 frames per second. So I do need to go ahead and type that in here. So one of the things you may choose to do is advance by more than one frame when you're clicking through and tracking the motion of the object. I've got a lot of options. I wish there was a way to type in your own. Um, I'm going to choose five frames and you can always adjust that after the fact if it's not working well for you. So instead of framing forward and seeing every frame of motion, we'll skip five frames forward and that'll just give us a more manageable set of data to analyze. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. So I want to focus on the video portion here. So there's a little slider here. I can move um, the graphs and make them smaller if I'd like. And I'm just going to kind of move those way over to the side. So to prepare the video for analysis, you do have to do a couple of things. You will notice in the video this orange, it's actually a level. Um, you need to have some sort of length reference in the video. And that is how the software will go from position on the screen to an actual position in say meters or centimeters or even feet. This button here will be what you need to do kind of before you start analyzing the video. To set the scale, we're actually trying to make this line here a certain length. So I want to drag those to the ends. So we want to move that to our known length. So this could be a meter stick. It could be really anything that you know the length of. So the default is to use a meter stick and say that this is one meter. This is actually uh, a four foot long level converted to centimeters. 48 inches, four feet is 121.92 centimeters 
or 1.2192 meters. Another really good tip, um, if you really want to be precise with any of your selections in the video analysis app, if you go ahead and click and highlight what you're interested in moving, you can use the arrow keys on your board. So I'm doing a really fine tune adjustment here using the arrow keys. Uh, I want to make that right the same length as that four foot long level. Um, I'm going to click here and you can also drag this around. I'll explain what that's for in a moment. Um, I want to make the end of that length reference just exactly the same length as the four foot reference. Now this is the origin and you can put this wherever you want. This is where your position points are going to be measured. Now let me go to where I drop the ball. I'm going to drag the slider back here. And you might be tempted to start with your origin right on the object. Um, I actually recommend making sure that your motion is in that first quadrant. So I like to have positive uh, position measurement. So if I were to say drop it from here, I would get negative positions because it's below that axis. I'm going to go ahead and just set it somewhere down here lower left and get my measurement accordingly. Another thing you can do is if for some reason your camera was tilted or you're analyzing the motion of an object on a ramp or something like that, you can click and drag here and tilt your X and Y axis. So now I've set my scale and this is where things get interesting. I want to track the motion of the ball as it falls. And at that same time, it will start to graph the data over here in the upper right corner and it will start to generate a data table with time, the X position, that would be your left right position, and your Y position. So one of the things I would like to do here is find my first frame. You can click and drag. I can try to find that spot where it's dropping or I highly recommend using your left and right keys. So right now I'm going forward. I want to back it up to the frame where is no longer touching my hand and that's a judgment call for sure i think it's probably maybe about right there and you notice let me close this so you can see it i'm 0.81 seconds into the video i really want this to be time zero because i want to analyze this if this is my first data point at time zero and to adjust that you can use this little triangle so this will also slide left or right and what I'm going to actually do is kind of get close to where I wanted to start. And I'm going to drag the main slider to the left. And it will not let me go before that point anymore. So I want to get this right on that frame again. I'm going to click on the triangle and use my right arrow. And the triangle is going to set frame zero. So I'm going to go a little bit slower. Here's one frame. I'm just starting to drop it. Next frame, I think I'm still touching it. One more frame, I'm gonna start from that point. And that is a judgment call. So that's a nice feature. You don't have to worry so much about pre-editing your video clip so it starts right when you want. And then I go to the add button. And when I go over the video, I will see a crosshair. And I wanna locate that crosshair right on my object. Now if I click, it's going to frame forward. I set that up here on the gear to be five frames and go ahead and click my next point. Now, if I don't want to be kind of influenced by my previous point, I can click here on trails and turn off the trail. So the trail is gonna show you previously clicked points. I wanna kind of look at this fresh and circle it and get it right in the center of that crosshair and click. And it falls a little bit further again. I've got the trails turned off for the moment. Click. I always kind of like to drag it away and then come back to make sure that I'm centering it. And notice it's starting to fall a little bit quicker. Continues to fall again, going forward five frames each second. And you can see on the right that I'm starting to generate some data and a graph. And it's getting close to the ground here. This might be my last click. 
Yep, the next one it's in contact with the ground. So I'm going to go ahead and stop at that point. I'm going to go back and turn on the trails just so you can see it. We can see that the position points are kind of close together at first. They get further and further spread out as the ball accelerates as it falls towards the ground. So if I drag that handle again, I can get a bigger view on my graph and it's plotting the X position, so horizontal position in red. And notice that doesn't really change much because the ball doesn't have a lot of left-right motion. In the Y direction, you can see that I start you know, a little bit above two meters off the ground. And as it falls, I've got a curved graph, kind of a parabolic shape. The next video that will be linked on the end card will show you how to get in and do some statistical analysis of the position versus time graph. If you have any questions, please post them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.